There is sometimes a fine line between sound design and decomposition. How do you reflect on that? What is your opinion? Yeah, the thing is that they, uh, the, the line between sound design and music is, uh, gets blurred more and more. So uh, what I prefer to do actually, which we didn't do in this case, but what I'd like to do is first go through the whole film with the sound designer and see who does what, where. Yeah. But now, this time I've got a lot of uh, room for uh, doing electronic things, which maybe people will think uh, is sound design actually, but it's actually music. But these things get, yeah. well, the line gets blurred and blurred more. So the, the, this whole definition is, is uh, getting a bit uh, difficult actually. Yeah. I can imagine that it should be one role maybe because you are yeah. making the whole suspense throughout the movie. Yeah. You should definitely one, have one person who coordinates this and see who does what where. Yeah. Otherwise you have in the mix, you have this tremendous amount of, of stuff from three people, which you just yeah. all open up and then it's, it's, a bl it's a mess. And then you yeah. have to make your choice then. So it's, well, that's a... That's the music supervisor we were talking about. No, well, more of the mixer and the... And the but sometimes directors just want to have as much options as possible. Then, you, But then you, well, you get in all kinds of trouble during the mix, but then they have to make all these creative decisions in the mix stage. You better tackle that earlier. And yeah. then when you talk things through, see who does what, where. Don't fix it in the mix. No, no definitely no, not, no. It's, it's better to, to make a mix in advance on paper. Yeah, yeah sort of, yeah. Sort of. Conceptually do that yeah, uh, up front, yeah. Have you done it the other way around as well, where you only did the sound design and not the music? Well, well we, I, I did some combined things, right? The yeah. music and also uh, abstract sound design things. Yeah. And also coordinated uh, the effects, which was really good, but then you have a lot of grip. In his, in his Albert's previous movie, we did that We did that, actually, yeah. 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 So that, was, that worked out really good. But this time, uh, Marco also, uh, Marco from Mass Sound Design, uh, left me a lot of space to do my thing, so it's, it's really good. He mixed yeah. it brilliantly, so it's, uh, it worked out fine. What are you working on now? I'm working actually on a, something really different. I'm not working on a film now, but I'm working on a, a dance. Because I, I really like also to do contemporary dance, and I'm working on a contemporary dance piece by Casino de Chatel. Well, I tend to just do films and dance music one by one and intermingle them, because I really like... I'm looking forward to doing the other one when I'm doing the, the, the one and, then, and vice versa. So I'd like to do them both. Do you sometimes use ideas from um, dance in your in the movies and the other way around? Are you inspired? Yeah, definitely. But they are really different beasts, I have to say, because a film is so much more concrete. Because it's uh, y y there's words and there's uh, story and there's and dance is a is a real abstract art. Yeah. So they, in that sense, is really close to music because that's also. Uh, it's, it's hard to talk about dance and that's about music. Yeah, and the, and the order is the is the other way around. The music comes fir first in yeah. most cases, and the choreography is is made after. Yeah, that's also really yeah. different because that's yeah that makes it different too. You you create the music to which is uh, danced to, and with film you just get this whole thing, and yeah. you need to fill that in to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but also with film you have this great things like, I mean, uh, a drone shot from someone driving. And, I mean, that's, that's so gratifying. You don't have that with dance. So, I mean, they're both great things to do. Oh. And uh, plans for the future? What you would like to do and never had a chance to do? Like James Bond film, <laughs> um, Spider-Man. Actually, I'm now uh, more in a place to which like, uh, like I said earlier, it's, it's hard to keep your own musical uh, persona alive. And I am now really into creating my own music, actually, just free from any other medium. So I'm, I'm quite work I'm, I'm really destined to do that for the coming. Thanks to COVID. <laughs> yeah, also, because, yeah, this, these are different times. So. But then you're releasing, you mean um, you're going to I release will, your I'm not, I'm not in any, not near that moment, but okay. I want to do that without any help of another medium, just make music which stands on its own.
Yeah. Which is nice for a change also. Yeah, without another goal or without yeah. servicing another purpose. Yeah. There goes the introvert. Uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. Yeah, yeah that's now you have to be the front the man, yeah, the only to, man. Yeah, you have to be in the limelight. Yeah, that can could be. Uh, yeah, I have to uh, work on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. Yeah. Yeah. Simo, any other uh, questions? Um, yeah, maybe one more question to Maurits. How would you explain your style, your personal style? Um, it, it has. Well, it had all th something to do with uh, romantic music, the uh, late 19th century, oh. uh, uh, first part of the 20th century. Um, but with sometimes electronics and... Uh, well, Are you really into Wagner and that sort of... Yeah. That's his music. Is Wagner, Mahler, Shostakovich, that's my, my uh, Ravel. And the good thing is his, his tempos are... Uh, also complementary to mine because I do either <laughs> a lot slower, <laughs> really, really quick things or slow, and he is just really rightly in between. So we have this broad palette of, of, of tempos for the film, which yeah. is also good. Any uh, film composer that you really look up for? Well, actually, not. Um, I, no, more, more. Uh, uh, Classical composers, the, yeah. the ones I just, just mentioned. Uh, and you it's the same for me, because when you, when you start listening to, uh, well, uh, John Williams or Ludwig Göransson or whoever, you will, be, you will be sound like a second pressing of John Williams. You don't want that. But with, when you listen to modern music, uh, like, uh, well, art music, uh, you can safely be a derivative of that. You can just copy that, but you won't sound like a second John Williams or like a copycat of, well, anyone. But you, uh, it's. I think it's much safer to look for inspiration into, uh, well, classical music and new music, and of course also pop music. Where do you see yourselves in ten years from now? Doing film, big bands, uh, solo career. No, I, I, I really want to keep doing what I do, but apart from that, I, I'd like to uh, push my individual things, my, my own music, yeah. a bit to the front. Me, me as well. More, more uh, music, music, music. So Corona really did yeah, something yeah, yeah, here, it right? It actually did, yeah. yeah. I'm uh, flourishing during uh, COVID. We are all discovering yeah. ourselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very soul-searching uh, soul moment yeah. for everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah great. So um, I think, uh, yeah, yeah okay. we already asked everything. Thank you so much. Okay. It was yeah. uh, really insightful and we have learned a lot. And yeah. we are li really looking forward to see all the solo projects, uh, <laughs> Corona <laughs> babies that we are going to yeah. have here. Yeah. So thank you, Anne. It was amazing. And thank you, Maurits, for all the insights. Thank you, thank you Simon. And we see you in the next uh, private kitchen. Goodbye.